Hello everyone! With Baldur's Gate 3 coming out on PS5 just around the corner, I figured I'll do another video with easily missed items in Baldur's Gate 3. In my previous video, I actually didn't include all the items I wanted, so I want to correct this in this video and present you my list of another very useful items found in mostly Act 1. Let me know if you want me to continue this series with Act 2 items and maybe also Act 3 items. But for now, let us jump back into Act 1 once more and I will present to you some more useful items that you can find on your first playthrough. So without further ado, let's get to it. The first item we'll talk about is the one some of you probably already know. It is the first uncommon item that you will find in the game, and it is the infamous Everburn Blade. And to get it, you have to defeat Commander Zalk when you're gonna fight him on the Nautiloid ship. But alternatively, you can also make his weapon drop by Shadow Heart's drop command. It's a level 1 spell that will be available to you right away when you acquire Shadow Heart, so after a couple reloads, you shouldn't have much problem in Zyke to drop this weapon. It's a very powerful greatsword that adds 1d4 fire damage and scales pretty nicely into Act 1. It's a great weapon for fighters like Lazel, so make sure not to miss it in this first major fight of the game. Another very good item that I forgot to talk about in my previous video is the Ring of protection. And it can be pretty tricky to get it, so hear me out. When you get to the druid grove, remember to save the tiefling that is on the beach surrounded by harpies. And after that, go talk to Maul in their underground hideout. He will provide you with the quest to steal the idol. But be careful, it can be pretty hard to get it at first because you are surrounded by druids that are making this ritual and making it hard for you to steal it in open sight. So what I did early on is cast fog by Gale and that will obstruct their vision and hide this item them into any container that you want. Then quickly teleport to camp, wait for a couple seconds, and after let's say a solid minute you can teleport back and grab this pack with the item inside, and the druids will be none the wiser. Then simply return to Maul with the idol and he will provide you with this ring. While items like these can be common in other D&D games, in Baldur's Gate 3 to my knowledge this is actually the only ring of protection in the game, and it will always provide you with plus one saving throws and plus one armor class. And unlike the brace of armor, this effect will be effective no matter what armor you wear. So you can be clad in heavy plate and this item will still provide you with an additional plus one protection. Speaking about the Bracers of Defense, this is also a great item that you can find in the Blighted Village, more specifically in the cellar below it. The same location when you can find some other interesting items like the Book of Tay. And these provide you with a plus two armor while you are unarmored. So a great item for your monks, wizards and sorcerers, but can be also useful on a barbarian. Because barbarians have the unarmored defense trait, which with some builds can provide even more armor total than if you would wear for example medium armor on Karla. So make sure to grab this item as well. Next two items we will talk about you can find in the Zentarim hideout, namely the Titan String Bow and the Gloves of Tivery. Titan String Bow is great for your strength based classes, especially if you're gonna lack dexterity, because it will allow you to add damage equal to your strength modifier to your ranged attacks, so a great item on all your strength based characters. And another great item here is the Gloves of Tivery, and they simply give you advantage on sleight of hands checks, which is of course great to give to your thief because now he's gonna have an easier time in opening locks and also stealing. And once you get to this hideout simply talk to Bram the trader and he can sell them to you. Next we will jump into the Underdark and get the Falar Aluve. I hope I spelled that right. It is a truly great weapon for bards but not only because it's a finessable longsword and also has an amazing ability that restores on short rests. You can either do 1d4 thunder damage to surrounding enemies after you use it or you can use it as a bless. The other option Shriek seems way more unique and also stacks with some interesting abilities. For example I heard some great things of it stacking with the Warlock's Eldritch Blast. It can serve you into well later into the game. And the fastest way to get this item is from the Selunite Outpost. If you have the Featherfall spell, it's very easy to get. Just jump somewhere around here, follow this short path, and the sword will be stuck in this rock. Kinda reminiscent of the Excalibur stories. And remember, because it's finessable, it's also great on your dexterity based characters. Next item we will grab from the Underdark are the Gloves of Uninhibited Kushigo. Those are great when you pair them with the Ring of Flinging that I talked about in my previous video, which you can get really easily in the Druid's Grove, and those gloves you get from the quest that the Dwarf in the Mykonid village gives you to find her husband. After you complete it, the gloves will be yours. Those gloves stack with the Ring of Flinging, so if you are making a Tavern Brawler build or some kind of Barbarian, those are great to have, especially with Frenzied Throw. 
And from the same vendor that rewards you with those gloves, you can also buy the Amulet of Restoration. Which is a great amulet for healers, but not only, because it's gonna provide you with the healing ward and mass healing ward spells. They will be always prepared until long rest, very handy healing item to keep around. Especially when you pair it with the Staff of Arcane Blessing, which I regrettably forgot to talk in my previous video, and this is a really amazing staff. It makes your bless even more powerful, giving you an additional 1d4 to saving throws and weapon attack rolls and an additional 2d4 to spell attack rolls. So not only will you make your melee characters more powerful, but now also your wizards and the like. And why I said it's great with the area of effect healing spells? Well, it's because we know of the ring that actually gives you bless every time you heal a creature. And it also works when you heal multiple targets at the same time. It is of course the whispering promise that I talked about in my previous video. And while we are at the topic of healing items, might as well mention the boots of aid and comfort, which are pretty neat boots that gives you temporary hit points every time you heal a creature. And they are sold by our trusty Grad the Trader at the Goblin Camp. While we are here, don't forget to talk to Blurg as he has some great items as well. One of those is Mel's First Staff, which gives you plus one bonus to spell save DCs and spell attack rolls. Spell save DC is actually very rare in Baldur's Gate 3, so it's a great staff to use throughout the whole game on your mages, wizards and the like. Additionally, you will also be granted the Mel's Acid Arrow spell. And if you plan to use a Warlock in your party, the Baneful is also a great weapon to get. Because for a Warlock it will most likely be the first weapon you encounter that you can make a plus 2. Because when you bind your weapon with your Warlock Pact weapon ability, you will double its enchantment. Also, on a hit you will possibly inflict Bane on your target. So make sure to grab this short sword. And while we are down here, we cannot forget about the awesome Adamantine armors. You get them at the Adamantine Forge in the Underdark after battling one of the bosses of the game. I don't want to spoil too much, so you will see it when you get here, but just a heads up, from my opinion, the items that you can craft here, the best ones are actually the armors. The weapons are not very impressive, the shield is okay that you can get, but the armors really shine. Because, well, just look at the statistics, you get immunity to critical hits and all the other bunch of goodies that are really good and can serve you all the way throughout Act 2 or maybe even further. So make sure to do this side quest when you're gonna land yourself in the Underdark. You will encounter it sooner or later when you're gonna get into the Grimforge. And now, a bit later into the game, when you reach around level 6, you're gonna probably get around the Mountain Pass, which is still by many considered to be Act 1. For me, it's an in-between area between Act 1 and 2, so it is worth to include some items that you can find here. Some of the amazing items you will find here, especially in the Gifyanki crash, I already talked about in my previous video, but in this one there are still a couple ones that I missed that I want to mention. Starting out with the first NPC that you will probably encounter in the mountain pass is Lady Esther and she has some really good goodies. Today I want to talk about the Graceful Cloth. Because it doesn't count as an armor in the game, you can equip it on your sorcerers, your wizards and of course your monks, and even barbarians like Karlak, because it won't impede your unarmored defense. It's an amazing armor because not only will it increase your dexterity by 2, it will also give you the nimble as a cat feature which gives you plus 1 bonus to dexterity saving throws and also increase your jump distance by 1.5 meters. Also the cat's grace feature gives you advantage on dexterity checks. Remember gloves of Tivari? Well now you're gonna have this constant advantage just by wearing this armor. So opening chests and locks will give you an instant advantage. Another item that Lady Esther has that you want to definitely buy is the periapt of wound closure. Great item for healers because it's gonna maximize the number of hit points restored by your healing spells. As a bonus, when you're gonna go down in combat, you will automatically get back up, so don't forget to grab this item. She also has two more decent monk items in the gloves and the staff, so make sure to grab that if you're playing a monk. Now when you're gonna get to the Gifyanki crash vendor, make sure to grab the Unseen Menace. It is a two-handed pike that gets the invisible weapon trait. It can be easily discarded as not many people know what the invisible trait does in the game. And and it actually gives you constant advantage on your attacks. So when you will attack with this weapon, you will always have advantage. A truly amazing weapon, especially if you will combine it with the polearm mastery and the sentinel feats. She also has some other great items and except the obvious ones, also look at the defender flail that gives you plus one armor class on a weapon. It can be very useful if you plan to dual wield. For example, I gave Shadowheart the dual wielding feat and I let her dual wield the defender's flail and also the arcane staff that I mentioned earlier in the video. So she can now do some decent damage with the flail and increase her armor like she would be using a shield. And thanks to the dual wielder feat, she gains additional plus one AC. And thanks to the staff 
of blessing, she still keeps her insane bless spell on steroids. One more item worth mentioning is the Larietan's Wrath which is another finessable longsword in the game. There is actually not many of those in the game, so make sure to grab this one as well. And now, last but not least, we have the Blood of Latander. Many of you of course mentioned to me this weapon, but I know it very well. I just didn't mention it before, because I think this item is more fun to find out by yourself. So I won't say exactly how to get it, and I won't give you the quest outline how to get it exactly, just make sure to explore the Gifianki crash throughout Lee and also the rooftop of it. As expected from a legend weapon it is amazing it is the first plus three weapon that you will encounter in the game and it also has the sunbeam as six level spell that is available to you once per long rest attached on it and it will be a very useful weapon in act 2 because it also blinds undead and other shrouded creatures so it's great to combat shadows and the like in act 2 on top of that once per long rest when your hit points are reduced to zero you will regain 2 to 12 hit points and allies within 9 meters will also regain 1 to 6 hit points so seriously do not leave the crash without this weapon. And now a bonus weapon that I was unsure if I should include it in this video or not, but you convinced me to do it. But beware because it is a bit of a spoilery weapon, so if you don't want to be spoiled about some act free weapon that you can receive after a quest, maybe skip this part. It is a bit of an exploit though and is a bit glitchy, so I'm not sure if it's not gonna screw up Lazel's quest, so it's up to you if you want to get it. And you can get it by using the trusty command on the cleric class to make Keyfrey Voss drop his weapon. It's a very low chance on tactician difficulty and actually in this video I just got tired about failing it over and over because it is a 9% chance but eventually after a couple reloads you should be able to get him to drop it. And well, then you're gonna have a Gifianki sword, one of the best swords in the game, especially for Lazel, because it is a plus 3 weapon with some additional damage when you're a Gifianki. So if you're not worried about breaking the quest potentially, grab it because it is very powerful. But at the same time, it is so powerful that I am not sure if I would even want to play it in Act 1 already. Then again, we have Blood of Latander available, which is also very powerful, so it's up to you if you want to grab it early. And that would be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy Baldur's Gate 3 if you're gonna grab it on console. Well, I envy you a little bit because you have an amazing game at your hands that you're gonna explore through the, the coming weeks. Or maybe you are starting another playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3 and want to check if you missed some items. Either way, I hope I helped you at least a little bit and let me know if you want to see another video with items now including Act 2. Thank you very much for watching my videos. We are nearing 4000 subscribers so I can't thank you enough for the incredible reception on the channel and also catch me live on Twitch TV Kainra, where we can hang out and also play some other games. If you want, you can like, comment and subscribe, the usual YouTube jazz and I'll see you again in future videos very soon.